Hello and welcome. On the screen right now is the double T junction. If you're not familiar with it, you might want to check out my introductory videos first. But keep watching this video if you want to see some of the possible variations that we can have on this idea. Now, just like the double T junction, a lot of these variations are similar in that the increased intersection throughput and reduced stopping times can more than compensate for restricting a driver's direction choices. So what are some of the variations I'm going to look at today? We can do things like adding extra lanes. We can add extra roads. We can also reduce the number of lanes. We can also mix in some two-way traffic and add in limited traffic lights. Now, each intersection I show here will have a different likelihood of being used in the real world. But because of a lot of these have never been seen before, I think they should all still be fairly interesting. So, let's get started. So, after investigating things like hexagonal and octagonal grids in cities skylines, more details about that in my other videos, I wanted to see if I could bring some of those ideas I had into square grids, and my first attempts looked like this. So here I have two different pre-double T junction attempts. On the left you can see an intersection that looks a bit like a double T junction, but with the difference that traffic from one direction can conflict with traffic from the opposite direction. This kind of conflict would not only be dangerous in the real world, but it's also kind of bad for traffic flow. Then on the right you can see a version where I use traffic lights to reduce the danger level, but at the cost of having traffic lights that are going to be red a bit more than half the time and it's going to slow everybody down. But after a while then, I came up with this intersection, the double T junction. Now before I go any further, because there are probably many more variations, I'd like to introduce some shorthand notation for describing these intersections. So for a four-way intersection, we need to describe all four roads. I'm going to start with north and work my way around the intersection clockwise. For each road, I'm going to say how many entry lanes we have, E, and how many exit lanes we have, X. So our basic double T junction would be described as E2, X2, E2, X2. Now let's compare that with some traditional intersections that you would be familiar with. The conventional two-way intersection would be called E1, X1, E1, X1, E1, X1, E1, X1. And a conventional one-way intersection would be X2, X2, E2, E2. So I just want to quickly mention that the angles and orientation of these intersections can easily be changed without affecting the fundamental properties. With all of the intersections you see here, like they may look different, but they're all basically the same as the original double T junction. Also, some of the intersections I look at could lend themselves to having an overpass or an underpass instead of things like traffic lights, but I'm just looking at at grade intersections in this video. And with a few exceptions, I'm just going to focus on the intersection themselves. I talk about the grid configurations that could be used in, in some of my other videos. So the most basic variation we can have is to add an extra lane. Then to keep the lanes balanced, when we add an extra lane entering the intersection, we also have to add an extra lane leaving the intersection. Then, if we use four-lane roads, there are many more possibilities. But when we do this, the usefulness of the resulting roads decreases. Now, I go over the reasons for that in my uh, grid analysis video, so check that out if you're interested in the details. Next, what if we have some lanes that give you the option to change direction at the intersection? Well, they might be a bit dangerous for the indecisive drivers out there, but we get some options like these. Next, let's see what happens 
when we reduce the number of lanes. So we can reduce the number of lanes leading to the intersection, or we can reduce the number of lanes leading away from the intersection, or we can do both. Now it might not always be obvious how to use some of these in a grid, but it's always possible to merge or diverge lanes in between the intersections. And then there's another use for these in a grid, if your traffic levels are not too high. With intersections set up like this, you can get away with single lanes everywhere, which can practically have the area of your city under tarmac. Next then, what if we have more roads, say for a six-way intersection? Well, a plain version of a six-way double T junction, or triple T junction maybe, would look something like this, with three inbound roads and three outbound roads. And while it looks pretty, it's not actually all that good for cross-city travel. Well, the interesting thing with a six-way double T intersection is that you can have a straight through direction, where one of the directions has three direction choices instead of the usual two. And we also have the option to increase or reduce the number of lanes on each road and add traffic lights. We can do a similar thing for eight-way roads, and the basic version of that would look a bit like this. But now though, we have the possibility of having two independent through roads. So now two of our inbound roads will have three direction choices. And again, we can increase or reduce the number of lanes that we use and add in traffic lights to allow our straight through directions lead to multiple outbound directions. So what about intersections that involve an odd number of roads, say a five-way intersection? Well, we can have a double T style intersection if we mix in some two-way roads with our one-way roads. And you can see a basic version of that here. But one of the problems with this intersection is that the traffic entering from the south, in this case, doesn't actually have a choice of where to go. But as with the six-way and eight-way intersections, we can also have a version with a pass-through lane, like this. Now that makes it a bit more useful. Every inbound direction now has a choice of two outbound directions. And again, we can add in more lanes and use traffic lights. And we could also have a version with three two-way roads. Finally then, we also have the possibility to use two-way roads in our even-numbered road intersections. So we can do this in a few different ways. We could keep the intersections free-flowing, but reduce the number of options that drivers have. Or we could add some traffic lights for the added middle lanes and keep the outer lanes free-flowing. Obviously, adding traffic lights will lead to these intersections not flowing as well as the derivatives of the classic double T junction, but depending on how they're implemented, traffic flow might still be better than with traditional one-way intersections. We can also mix one-way and two-way roads on six- and eight-way intersections to get some interesting results. For example, we could get a six-way road with traffic passing through the centre in both directions. So, time to start wrapping up this video. Once I realized the potential of the double T junction, I started getting these ideas for these variations. And I've enjoyed collecting this patchwork of ideas together in one place. Again, I have to say that not all of these ideas are going to be particularly useful. And that's partly because the plain version of the double T junction has certain advantages over the various variations and I go over the reasons why in some of my other videos. But there are some places where these intersections could be used, particularly in places like where double T grid meets a conventional road. Also, 
The single lane variations could be useful in places where you don't need the capacity of a full double T junction and where you want to use just small single lane roads. Another thing I have to say is that this list is far from comprehensive. Like if you look at all the possibilities, then there's actually a huge number of different ways these changes can be combined together. So I think I'll leave it there then. Uh, don't forget to do the usual YouTube things like hitting the like and subscribe buttons, commenting and sharing, as well as checking out some of my other videos on this topic. So thanks for watching.